how are you? Today I want to talk about or have a discussion about The Lost Queen from Signe Pike. I just got done reading it so I wanted to discuss it with you guys. I'll do a brief synopsis and then a non-spoiler opinions and then I'll do spoiler opinions about this because that's what I really want to talk about. So synopsis is we follow Lingrith Langora through her life. We start with her being 10, 11 years old, and then the book starts with basically one war breaks out between a neighboring kingdom and the Ingles, and then a little bit into the story, a second war breaks starts or it's rumbling between the their religion, which is what they call in this book the old ways or the old gods, the new religion coming in, which is the Christians. We break into part two where she's about 14 and her job in her family is to get married to a lord or prince to gain alliance to protect the family and she doesn't want to do that she wants to be a wisdom keeper which is part of their religion but she is the twin sister to the man who inspired all the legends of merlin so he is destined or is decided to be a wisdom keeper in this book then we kind of in part two you kind of put the ingle war aside a little bit and then it basically focused on the her religion the old ways and the Christian war. And then part three is when she's 32, married. We're still dealing with both of those wars, except for she's now married and has a role in politics now. So that's the synopsis to this. My unspoiler thoughts are, it's pretty political, which I really like in a book. There is Forbidden Love, which I don't know. It could, if it's done well, it's, I like it. If it's not done well, then it's kind of cheesy to me. This was done, oh, well, I think this was done well, but it made me mad. So I, I will talk about that later. The pacing was, it wasn't slow, but it wasn't fast. There's always something happening. You're, the, sh- the old story was moving forward, but there wasn't necessarily always action. But it was intriguing and interesting to me. I would probably recommend this book to somebody who likes heavy politics, historical fiction. It's labeled as a fantasy, but there's very, very little fantasy in it. It's just, it just has a little touch talked about magic within healing, basically, and not a fantastical, magical system. If you go to the historical fiction side, then you'll probably like this more than if you're looking for a fantasy to read. I liked Langrith. I liked her as a character. I rooted for her. I wanted her to do well. I liked that she wasn't perfect and made mistakes. I didn't ever like fear for her life. But I didn't always think she was completely safe from consequences either. Like, I always feared what the consequences might do or might do to her moving forward as she wanted. So that kept me intrigued and kept me wanting more. Now to the, to the spoiler part. So if you haven't read it, exit stage right. Right. <laughs> exit stage right or left. Just exit. Bye. Okay. So getting down to the nitty gritty, the forbidden love in this story ticked me off. And the reason why it ticked me off is because he was a jerk to her. I understand. No, I don't understand. Okay. So basically her dude, what is his name? What is his name? Her, her forbidden love dude, Mylgwen. He... It it was insta-love, which I kind of get for the time period. They kind of had, like, I was rooting for the relationship at first, but then towards, like, the end of when she was 14, he decided to test her because she, she she told them she had to be married to somebody else and that they couldn't have this relationship and that the kiss that they had was not a good idea. And then she saw him at a festival or a, yeah, I think a festival later. He gave attention to another girl. She got mad. And then his excuse was, maybe I wanted to test to see if you really loved me. And she just forgave him. I go, okay, that's fine. And then they diddled. And I'm like, what? You're, you're just, you're just gonna forgive him like that? Like, he was a complete ass. 
he he knew that you couldn't just run and jump into his arms because she's betrothed to a freaking prince. And now you're gonna be like, oh, well, she's not paying attention to me, so I'm gonna pay attention to another girl and just to see if she gets mad. That's kind of a complete jerk move, in my opinion. Then he does it again after that night. He didn't, he doesn't talk to her for 17 years. And then his explanation is, oh, it's because I loved you too much and I didn't want you to suffer like I did because I loved you too much. And she was legitimately mad that he didn't talk to her for 17 years. And then she just took that explanation of, oh, okay. And she jumped into diddling him again. I'm like, really? I, I get that you, you've only spent like a, a tiny minimum amount of time with this dude and you really think you love him and, but make him suffer a little bit. Like make him sweat. Basically he just said, oh, well, it was because of this. And then she's like, well, okay. And you know, let him off the hook. So that irritated. Besides that, I love the politics. Now, Lingareth didn't get to do much politicking herself, but I'm presuming that comes in the next book. How she did ex she explained a lot of politicking that was going on. She was like, oh, "Okay, well, my husband can't do this because if he does this, 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 and this will happen." Like she understood politics really well and explained it well she just couldn't do it herself which i'm excited to see in the next book that should be coming out in september i'm hoping to get that what also made me really happy about this book is i love to see the relationship between her and her brother it was super strong it was super sweet but they held each other accountable for the stuff that was going on and they didn't let each other pity themselves or feel sorry for themselves or not own up to who they should be. I also loved the relationship between her father and her. It was, uh, he was a strong uh, man, but he was also sweet. <laughs> and uh, in this time period, like women didn't own weapons and her dad gave her a weapon and expected her to learn how to use it. I thought that was super cool. I love that about this book. The friendships are really sweet and I enjoyed reading and experiencing them. In the first part of the, the book, the revenge that they got against the, oh, the, the cousins. What is their name? Peridor and Gawergi? Gawergi? The names, the names get me though. They're interesting. I like them. Don't get me wrong. They, they intrigue me, but they're, they're really difficult to pronounce. So it would be Gawergi, but at least she puts the pronunciations in there. So, yay. Of course, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this, you've already read the book, so you already know that. Peridor and Gawergi, uh, the revenge they get for when Gawergi bites off the chicken head was fantastic. The fact that they put a whole bunch of bloody birds in his bed was amazing. And then when the Christians cut down all of their secret trees and bury Fergus's body on their sacred land where they've just cut off their trees, they go to court to do this trial and they are bantering back and forth about whether to remove the body. The Christians don't think the body should be removed because that's, you know, disturbing a body after it's buried is against their religion. The fact that the body was buried in sacred land is against the old ways religion. And so they went back and forth. I can't remember if something was decided to be removed or not, but Cathan comes in and says, well, it doesn't matter because it's already decided and basically just dumps Ferguson's body right, right in the middle of the court and sues her right and sues. That was amazing to me. How they get back and how they pursue their justice it was inventive and it caught me off guard and I loved it. Another thing I want to talk about is the relationship between Langreth and Ruthric. I really liked him until the end. Uh, he seemed like a pretty good husband, not mean, not cruel, but loved her in the way he could. But ov obviously his, his passion was the politics and the kingdom and the kingdom first before his, his wife. But he tried to honor his wife as much as he could, but the kingdom came first. So 
I thought he was amazing. And I was irritated about how she forgave Mile Quinn super easy the second time after I think she's been treated pretty well by her husband. I thought she, maybe she should be a little bit more loyal and because her husband to me was pulling more for her, keeping the old ways as much as he could and honoring her more than he could have in a sense until the very end when he locks her in a room. I understand why he did it. I understand because she ran away basically twice without even talking to him. I, gr I granted, I don't think if she did talk to him, he would let her go. So I understand why she did it. And actually I was pulling for her both times that she did do it. But that's the consequences that happens when you go against your husband and now you have to attack her brothers and basically your daughter now because she's there with him. That's like the unintended, well not unintended, that's the consequences of her doing what she did by running away. He, he had to choose to lock her and again he's kingdom first like family wife second so then that made me change my mind on the whole liking and respecting him so I thought that was pretty pretty dirty my predictions maybe for the second book is it says that she's the queen so obviously something happens there that they, if he becomes king because they still have to name him king obviously something happens they have to defeat her brothers. Otherwise, the king now, whatever his name is, gets sick and dies. That's the only other way this could happen. So either he defeats her brothers and then now she's in a state of mourning or he just gets sick and die in battle and they choose whatever to do or stop the war or whatever. But I don't think she can get off with Rise not, not being found out as not her husband's son. So I, that's gonna happen. I really hope that they can get her daughter out, but I also don't think that this battle is gonna go happily. There's gonna be some, a lot of devastation with the battle that's coming because this, this book ended with her husband locking her in, her son and husband going off to war to fight the battle, and her son said, hopefully we can get my sister away from your brothers before something terrible happens but again i don't i don't know would her husband would her husband be kingdom first and family second in that situation what do you think what do you what are your predictions if you read the book what are your predictions like do you do you think rise is gonna get found out do you think he's gonna defeat both brothers who do you think is going to survive? Who do you think is going to die? And does he pull his daughter out? Like, does he have to make tough decisions? Or her husband? Rutherk? Rutherk? Would Rutherk, is he going to be kingdom first or family second when it comes to his daughter? Like, what tough decisions do you think is going to be made in the next book? Comment below. Let me know what you think as well as like, subscribe if you want to. Yeah, like, subscribe. Join my Discord, it's super fun. We talk about books, anything, and if that's where you want to connect, I mean, if you want to connect to me, that's where I'm at all the time. Um, me and a couple of my friends are already on there and we constantly talking about books. We're also doing a buddy read of the Miss Morden series by Brandon Sanderson. So if you want to join in that, that's low. Otherwise, see you later, bye.